Hello and welcome to Michael and Ivanka's grand podcast, proving every week that it is possible for a man to let a woman talk. My name's Michael <laughs> Forrest. And I'm Ivanka Magic. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Well I've been done, seeing Michael. it. I've been seeing it here and there. I mean, it's you hard for me. so modern. It is tough for me to, like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is possible. Um, this week we're going to talk about the universal panacea that is jobs 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 what is more important than jobs jobs i cuz i i don't think job is the answer to every question and apparently <laughs> conservative type conservative type people do and um uh, we're going i want to like talk about some stuff i read in bullshit jobs Talk about the just as I become increasingly anti-capitalist, radicalised against the system that keeps us all down and p- propagates the wealth of a select few. Just want to have a little rant about jobs. Yeah, fair dues. I've been thinking about this a lot recently. Uh, I have been thinking about the fact that I've got, I can find plenty of things to do when I'm not going to work. <laughs> Is, I think my There's point. A lot to do, isn't there? And why there is, is a lot job, to do. job stomps on everything else? It does. How's it going, Ivanka? Well. I have made something like 23 jars of lemon marmalade. Okay. Including what my mother and I are calling a special edition version, <laughs> which uh, in which we made the peel really, really thin and tiny. And it's very nice. But we okay. because we messed about with it so much, we got two jars where normally we'd get six. So it's not mm-hmm. the most efficient use of the lemons. Okay. Still many lemons to come. So more lemon-based products will be manufactured in my house the other thing the other i was on the radio this week bbc sussex talking about the bravo awards the brighton bravo awards michael and vanka's grand podcast the restaurants brighton website promotional (laughs) podcast (laughs) i wonder how many people who listen to podcasts are actually in brighton but anyway we have had uh it's nice them to celebrate Lots of people got into it this year. It's quite cool. It's quite fun. It's nice. My favourite thing is seeing that a couple of the... It isn't many venues, but a few of the venues are posting who they voted for right. in the categories that they're not nominated in. Obviously, everyone's going to vote for themselves in the categories, and that's <laughs> fine. But in the ones they're not nominated for, then they're putting up their lists of, oh, we're going for so-and-so and so-and-so, which is nice mm. to see a bit of, like, you know, high-fiving over the internet, a bit of double high-fives, that kind of thing, yeah. a bit of love, hearts, that sort of stuff. How long has it taken to get to this stage with this Bravos thing? This is the fourth year that it's fourth run. Fourth year. I mean, I was amazed the first year because we got nearly 25,000 votes and I was quite right. surprised. I was like, we'd written, I'd written it in the strategy document. I was like, mm. let's go for 25,000 votes. I'm right. thinking that's like pie in the sky. And we made, we got 24,000 something. So I was like, oh. But it, this is, I'd say that now it's in its fourth year. This is the year where people are kind of going, all right, okay, this thing is here. It does seem that people who make it onto the lists of winners get some custom out of it let's let's be bothered engage let's engage man let's engage cool um well well done for making an, a new institution so we're quite we're quite pleased with that and especially in a week where um the government has decided that anybody who you know clears your table or washes up after you or actually cooks a lot for you doesn't seem to be worthy of entering the country so um, the hospitality industry is not doing well out of the new points-based immigration system what a surprise (laughs) problems caused by brexit affecting the least well off who could have predicted it um who could have got angry about it who could have started a podcast around it (laughs) and and how are you michael i have just about (coughs) case in point just about recovered from my 
well, like a week long flu situation, I'd say. So I had like, um, I was just too ill to think for a couple of days. And then I just had this cough and completely lost my voice for a few days as well. So hence last po week's podcast not existing. Uh, but today I'm more or less back in business. Like, but yeah, I've just been like work is oppressive at the moment. I'm just like really like head down trying to get a minimum viable product out by the end of February. And it's it's feeling doable, but I'm just like I kind of start my day at like eight thirty ish or nine, and just I'm just in a tunnel of intense concentration until sort of six, like every day. Streaming away, the streams are going quite well as well. I got some donations. I keep getting like raided by other streamers at the moment. So suddenly, like fifteen twenty people end up coming into your channel, and some of them stick around, ask you what you're doing. So I'm sort of like slowly building, bootstrapping a sort of group of interested people around what I'm doing just by working and like talking about what I'm doing as I work so that's going quite well you get raided by other streamers is that uh is that the terminology yeah it's like a raid someone's just raided your channel with 16 people and it's like basically they're finishing up for the day or for the night and then they're just like well I've got this chat room full of people I'm going to just give them to someone else. Oh, really? And then everyone jumps in. It's a very interesting culture, this streaming. And so wow. my, my average is slowly creeping up of how many viewers I've got each day. So it was like two for ages, two or three, and now it's like probably four or five. And yesterday it was like 15 average set on in, one, in my session. It, so. And do you interact with these people? Yeah, if they say something in the chat. Like, I always, like, make it a priority if, if someone says, what are you building, to explain the pitch, to give the pitch, show the product, show some screenshots, show yeah. a bit of fancy stuff. So, so is this like the sort of virtual equivalent of, you know, uh, when, I, when I was a youngster and didn't want to do a job, I'd make my mum sort of come and sit with me. Mummy, why don't you come and sit with me whilst I do this bit of homework that I don't want to do? Or why don't you come and sit on my bed while I tidy my bedroom or something mm. like that? Is that a sort of virtual equivalent of sort of being around other people without actually kind of doing something? Yeah, yeah. well, here was, here was a thing that used to happen when I was a kid. What? Can I come in? Why? See your meagre. And I would let in one of my younger brothers to sit behind me while I did something on my computer. So it's kind of bringing back that, which I kind of like, just like having someone sort of sat behind me. So I had my two younger brothers that would sort of come in and like watch me do things, either play a game or make something or do some music. So it's just like bringing that, that back. So it just lets me feel okay. like an eldest brother. And now like I've just written in my description, look, I've been programming since 1986. So anyone coming in knows they're seeing the real... The, the business, the real deal. Um, 1986. Yeah. That's me. So I'm, I'm just getting on with that. I'm hopefully going to have a product soon. Um, I'll, uh, and then it's going to be PR mode, I think, just like telling everyone about it. And then if I can't, if that Apple revenue at the end of March doesn't look like anything, I've got to go, right, I guess I need to like get some money from somewhere. This is the sort of four-ish month product project. I mean, it's taken twice as long as the plan was. So it's like nine months probably working on this thing since I last got paid. <laughs> like, <so. laughs> Which is a nice position to be in. Like, I'm surprised. I, I mean, this is, the, like, this is the benefit of cutting costs so much. It's like, oh, I can sustain myself on not too much money for yeah. a prolonged bit. Also saved up for a load of big holidays, which now we're not going on. When I was a kid, job was number one thing. Also, like when my dad sort of didn't have a job for ages as well. So it was like, and that kind of like isn't good for the self-esteem. Um, but um, 
I think like having a job in the sense of there is something in society for which I am responsible and other people are looking at me for results around is a nice thing. There's no argument about that. And paid or not, having a job to do is a nice thing, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think anyone can deny that. And I think it's because ultimately if you feel like you're helping other people in some way, that's very good for your soul. And um, where it goes wrong is where in capitalism, jobs are things generously given to you by wealthy people or people who have talked to a lot of venture capitalists or people that are part of a an old institution that gives people jobs and they're basically a mechanism as um as noam i heard noam chomsky say this uh business is a tyranny in which people rent themselves as slaves and the way the way i'm thinking about it is by virtue of having the capital this person gets to harvest a lot more value from your effort than you do, an unfair amount of value from your efforts. So as AOC said recently, you don't make a billion dollars, you take a billion dollars, mm. right? You didn't make the widgets, the workers made the widgets. <laughs> and anyone that has become wealthy by, by running a company, well, personally wealthy by running a company is basically stealing value from their employees if like yeah maybe you should get a little bit more for having the idea and setting setting up but at the moment it's what it's like a hundred the the lowest paid employee the highest paid employees get paid like a hundred times more than than the lowest paid ones now I, th I think that's the for me that's the 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 crux of it is that yes you were clever enough to do it but to come up with the idea but every single person has contributed to you pulling that idea off without the person who cleaned the office without the person who drove the bus to get the people to work to get da, 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 da. there is yeah. no there is a, no single role that is more important yeah. than another and not to mention outside of the the employees is the home that raised the person, the so, commons yeah. that gave the common yeah, yeah. things that people could, yeah, learning yeah. resources, all those things, yeah. education, all, all, like yeah. the town that you were raised in, like roads, yeah. all this kind of stuff. It's all connected. And the idea that one person, like ideas are cheap. The idea that one person yeah, yeah. just... And, and really, like, the privilege to execute... An, like, wealth gives you the privilege to execute on an idea. And frankly, yeah. it's not the quality of the idea that usually says whether yeah. or not you're successful. It's, could did I not have to work for one or two years while I tried a stupid idea out? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. And it, sometimes it doesn't matter what the idea is, and especially if you're bringing other people in, and you're especially if you're listening to the other people. Like, you can have some stupid idea. If you don't have to work for a living for two years, you'll probably turn that into something or other. And if you yeah, don't, yeah. no problem. Maybe try yeah. another one. Yeah, yeah. And if you're in a sort of either because you can afford it or because you've got the connections to persuade people to give you money or you happen to be white male in which case there's much more chance of venture capital capitalists giving you yeah. money um, all these other things it's like this idea that one person is more important than another is it's very hard to detach from that idea i think mm. for many people because we like to think that I think, you know, ego gets in the way. I think we all know people that we don't like very much or we don't think are very good at things. And we just like, why should they get the same money as me? They're, they're mm. lazy, they're rubbish at their job, blah, blah, blah. And then I think we focus on those things instead of thinking about all the people who aren't as, you know, aren't lazy, aren't rubbish at their jobs. They just don't mm. do the same job as us. And it, it, I think that's part, because a conversation, whenever I'm talking to somebody about things like this, who, you know, if you take the older, you know, your older generation Daily Mail reading type of thing, mm. it, there is a bit of a, well, why should my hard work pay for that person to be lazy? It's like, but there's not that many of those people that you're focusing on. There's always going to be lazy people who don't deserve, but... Yeah, and, um, and I think just as a thought experiment for these pe those people saying that, it's like, okay, picture in your head a person who's not that bright, 
doing a sort of menial labour job and like fucking it up a little bit and being a bit frustrating. Now picture someone with identical intelligence, identical slightly not very good at things, but they're rich. <laughs> Yeah. Like what? The only difference, but and, and you sort of picture someone that oh, he's just silly. You picture a sort of Boris Johnson type, don't you? Like just sort of bumbling through, but sort of getting away with it on charm. And oh yeah, it's fine. That the the charm comes from the money. In a way. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Like I, I'm trying to say, like um, <clears throat> we feel like people feel okay to look down at someone and penalize someone for not being bright if they don't if they're poor in a way that is not culturally not a normal thing to do if they're rich because i mean maybe it is maybe it's it's a different kind of frustration you do do meet those sort of you know that harry enfield character that tim nice but dim type person I, i have definitely encountered a few tim nice but dims in fact there's a few people that i call tim nice but dim but you know they're sort of um, projected into environments because people give them opportunities that you know no yeah. one's going to say to them, I've got this I've got this opportunity for you to to come and clean the toilets in my company mm. they'll say why don't you come and be an a, an intern an assistant or something mm. it's not going to be the lowest um, or the, you know the most menial task that they get come and be a posh do. voice man come and be a posh voice man it's like i guess like again like wealth yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of buys you manners and a nice accent and it's like it's kind of a safe yeah. bet to put someone in with some manners and a nice accent um yeah. versus someone that's kind of grown up on an estate and like has gone to like uh, you know sort of state schools and maybe doesn't talk proper and uh, yeah, yeah. makes you sort of like, oh no, we don't want to project that image. And it's like, and, it, and it's, it's this not talking proper is quite a funny inequality, as well. yeah. But yeah, it's that work. sort of. Um, th- so there's that. There's one side of it is this idea that some jobs are worth more than others. And I get it. If you've trained for a million years to be a neurosurgeon and mm. you are highly, highly skilled and highly educated in an area. I think, you know, there are many ways that we can reward you and, you know, maybe that that is more money. Um, But but I'm not sure anyone becomes a neurosurgeon for the money. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's like it's the extrinsic motivators versus whatever, like intrinsic motivators. And I think I don't want a neurosurgeon working on me that is in it for the money. I want someone that really (laughs) is into the idea of neurosurgery. So I don't. Yeah, I think you're right. Like who's going into that? For the money, that would be madness. Yeah, I've done a. Yeah, I did a. I did a research. Uh, one of our user research project for NHS Innovations years ago, um, and interviewed a lot of uh, NHS people at all levels, but including like a bunch of highly specialist doctors, mm. and they're all mad, <laughs> mm-hmm. but mad in a good way. They're sort of insanely clever and driven and curious and interested so it's like there was an example of a of a surgeon he'd got given some software that didn't quite do what he wanted so he learned how to program so that he could write software that did what he wanted it to do as a new you know they, they just kind of go and you know they'll they'll be like uh, uh, there was a, a woman um lung specialist who you know it's like phd number 65 um again apparently she this is what she told me like the, the survival rates for lung cancer part of the reason they're low is because using your eyes alone it's very hard to distinguish between cancerous tissue and healthy tissue in the lungs Mm. so when they go in to take the cancer out it's a high chance that someone gets left in so she invented this like handheld infrared light thing Mm. that you could shine on someone's lungs and then you could see and they're always inventing and doing things so Mm. i'm not saying we should pay them less because they but because they they they're doing it for for there's a drive that is beyond money but um but equally they wouldn't be able to operate in a if the if the operating theater wasn't clean if the machine didn't work if the software didn't work if the if the, somebody hadn't made an infrared light bulb to go in the infrared lamp to see there's no one bit that that can exist on its own Yes, and also what you've taken an example there of a well-paying job that actually does have a lot of meaning and value, like in a yeah. very human sense. But most very well-paid jobs aren't that. 
their sort of like placeholder middle management higher up management like sort of status jobs um where you people don't do very much no go to meetings Uh, you got a lot of meetings and, and yeah meetings. a lot of well paid jobs are basically a lot of meetings aren't they like meetings, you just talk yeah. and talk and like maybe a tiny thing gets but mostly it's like the 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 doers that are sort of frustrated going we talked about this already meanwhile people are making yeah. their careers on just talking talking in meetings um yeah and um so the the idea of what what has value is so skewed by something weird by like a desire to well, there's a status drive, isn't there? And then there's also like how much proximity you have with where the actual money kind of squirts out. Sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, if you're in sales and you're getting sales commissions because the money is right in front of you and I can measure immediately how much sales value I had, then, yeah, it's sort of like much easier to. Well, for someone in sales but, to complain that they're not getting yeah. sufficiently rewarded, but someone that's a bit further away from or doesn't get to see the, you know, yeah. the sales or the profits or anything, you know. Yeah, but I, I mean, we, we've got a, the, there's a couple of things. One, going back to our neurosurgeons, I don't really, I don't want anyone to be worried about money, but I certainly don't want somebody who's poking around in my brain to be sitting there worrying about how they're going to pay their bills. No, no, absolutely um, not. And, and, I, and I don't want anyone to be worrying to be about worried, how they're going to no. pay their bills. <laughs> but the sales thing is a really interesting point because we had this conversation because we worked with a few people on, on Restaurants Brighton and we sort of, we, sh- we, we used to do a, oh, if you introduce a new client, we'll give you, you know, the more sort of sales commission based hmm. and then we changed it to be to just be a share because if you if the site's not fast and running well you can't sell it so hmm. you know there's no there's nobody it's a very you know in a, in a very in our tiny little microcosm there is a interdependence that means that you know if we do well we'll all we'll all have a bit but if we don't hmm then we all suffer and it's not just because the salesperson brought in a sale that they get the yeah. they've got to have something to money. sell for a start otherwise yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> but like i obviously like i feel the lack of a salesperson as well when i haven't got one working like doing like pushing what i'm doing like that's a real it's not yeah, that yeah, we yeah. don't need sales people it's just that so it's just the way that some jobs are perceived as a lot more valuable when and, and others yeah. and, and as you keep saying like it's it doesn't work unless everything's there no. and yes like leadership is a very important role to have and there can only be one of them so i, I don't know like is it a it's just a weird human perception of fairness that the fewer of a job the there is less of a job there are um the more that job should be paid i i i i think we we've found ourselves in a situation where it's it's clear that that's got out of hand I think that the, the lack of a salesperson, you know, a good salesperson is critical to any product. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter how good it is. If you haven't got a really good salesperson selling it, then sure. no one's going to know about it. So I, I get I get that. But the but the whole as you go up the ladder, getting more money, it's more, you know, it's all it's kind of because that's what we do rather than that's what we need. I I mean, I'm sure I've made this statement before, but it's been a very long time since I earned less than I needed. And it's like, and then, and, but then with every, um, 
pay conversation it's like well this is what the market dictates if you want me to do more you've got to give me more money because 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 them's the rules yeah. <laughs> you know you can't blind demand just because i just because i'm not that bothered you know like that more money's not going to make me you know what you were saying at the very beginning of the podcast today about reducing your costs hmm. like i've lived within my means for a long time now and even when my means have grown, all that happens is I, I don't know. I just spent more money goes. You, you, you. Um, I, it's amazing what happens once you're past that that what fifty grand threshold, or where when you've got enough money, you start just buying pointlessly more expensive versions of the same thing. You start yeah. getting your groceries in Whole Foods that you could just as easily get in the co-op and it would cost like a third of the price. But you're just like, well, now I buy the same thing. And it's, and it's you know, mango, it's pretty hit and miss wherever you get it. And um, like tables and like furniture and things to hang up. And it's it's like, it's amazing how much it is possible to spend on stuff that is completely frivolous. And that's kind of where it goes, isn't it? The luxury money. So let's. Why don't we get everyone up to that threshold before we all start going out and spending luxury money on things? Maybe we shouldn't <laughs> yeah. be getting luxury stuff while there are still people like way below the, you know, yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah. living think, wage yeah. line. Yeah. Like maybe well, it, we should be ashamed of getting luxury. And it's nice to get it. It, it. it is nice. I'd like to fly first class. That sounds great. But um, I mean, yeah. that's another level again. It's like it is really diminishing returns. It's like, well, it's it is more comfortable, but it's still an air. It's only going to be five or six hours. Like, it's fine. You'll be fine sitting there for five, you yeah. know, a few hours. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The diminishing returns and the being being able to isolate, insulate yourself from the poor people is the main thing that that wealth buys. And if we didn't have the poor people, if everyone had a certain amount of money, then you wouldn't have to do that so much. Yeah, but, but, yeah, yeah, but Michael, but Michael yes. neither of us started life rich and we've worked really, really hard and we deserve all those luxuries because we've worked really, really hard and gone to university and then worked really hard. And why shouldn't we get paid more and have a nice handbag? Yeah, survivor you know, that's, bias. That's, that's the it's, uh, that's yeah. the uh yeah, and, and the, it's it's absolutely true that we like i i i and i see and I, I say this but like like we do give ourselves credit for our success probably disproportionately <laughs> like we do have a there's a very human tendency to say well i made this happen you <sighs> kind of whatever's happened in your life you kind of turn back the narrative you go well if the if I hadn't done that on that day, then I wouldn't have started this chain of events, which ultimately led to me changing the world with my thing. Um, when things aren't going your way, it's not healthy to think like that. No. Um, so I don't think it's healthy to think that way when things are going your way. So, but I like it's so, it sucks you in so hard. And I keep coming back to my Bitcoin thing. It's like, finally, my ship has come in. Like my thing that means I finally got the money that I deserve, that I worked for. And I do work so flipping hard. And like I haven't, <laughs> for no rewards for a while, I'm like, please make this pay off a little bit because I worked so hard on this. And But there are so many things that I've worked really hard on that have not paid off. And some that have. So, you know, let's not, let's not turn that into a thing. But I wanted to talk about the... Um, the absurdity... Well, we've got... I'm sort of looking at England, the UK and America. I'd like to be looking at some other countries. I'm learning my Chinese. I'm watching... I'm trying to learn a bit more about India. But for now, it's UK and America. Um, where um, America has this... Do you know, when I first heard SVP as a job title, Senior Vice President within a company, like, I thought there was one vice president to a president... But in America, they've turned this video game of status roles, of hierarchy, into like, to the point of absurdity, where everyone's sort of fixated on getting to the next level of the game, which is, I'm a VP, and now, oh, well, they've put in a new role, which is senior vice president, and now there are 16 of those in the company. <laughs> oh, now I'm the senior vice president. Then I'm going to be a senior... I don't know, what is it, directors, president? I, they just make up arbitrary, fancy-sounding yeah. job titles to sort of keep you placated in the same way that someone designing a video game is kind of going, 
just putting in like these little rewards and little stimulation, yeah, 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 little yeah. things, so you feel like you're just getting a bit further every year, like or every five years, and it's just an absolute lie. And I always felt this, and now I'm like seeing it for what it is, and it's the cynical exploitation of, I mean, is is of labour by like the the wealthy? It's like no, we'll give you this video game to play while we. Yeah, and yeah, that's why yeah, I've yeah. always liked to, preferred to talk to the CEO, preferred to talk directly to the privileged, blah, blah, blah. But because I cannot be fucked with the, the fake game that they've <laughs> made up. It's stupid. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. many people like buy into it. And especially when you're sort of school grades, 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 university grades, grades, grades. Ooh, and, and you sort of want to keep it going. Like my worth is measured in these kind of steps up. And, like, and where the US has senior vice presidents of fucking... EU Western EU sales of yeah, yeah, yeah. widget type A, like um, the UK has like the public set this spinal column system in the public sector. And it works yeah. both to standardise, you know, your worth across a sort of global scale, and give you this like pathetic little. Oh, we've just got to get up to the next spinal column level that has been instituted, and and I know like the public sector has more need for the standardization and the fairness and there are a lot more but i just think it's too low and like i just think i just think everyone should, i'm just a radical fucking socialist and i think everyone should get paid the same whatever <laughs> the, they do the the, uh, the funniest thing i i hadn't realized in the civil service was that at some point i don't i was doing a project at dwp at one point and they um uh apparently at a certain grade you've got armrests on your chair and that was an indicator <laughs> that was olden days i don't think that's modern times but i was like what <laughs> and then people go oh you know that's a grade eight job but i'm like eh. <laughs> what he said i just think there's a I th- I don't, it's funny how of of course i care about what people think of me I do, mm. and I yeah, and I do care, and I want people to be in, you know impressed and want to think yeah. well of me, and I, I want those things for sure. There's no no denying that, and it's quite funny to me sometimes when people go. I remember remember speaking to a recruiter, and I'd gone from a head of role to um, a canonical. They just called me a lead. And she was like, can you, can we write something else? Because that mm. looks like a step down. I was like, oh, whatever, call, call me. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's completely of no consequence, really, because what's a director one place is, not, you know, it's just, but, and I've worked, I've had people work for me who are obsessed, obsessed with the mm. job title. Mm. So, I mean, the person who really cares most about this is you. Mm. Not anyone outside. Oh, I want people to recognise. If you do your job well, people will recognise. Frankly, yeah, um, and um, and it uh, plays back into the like the bullshit jobs thing. It's like people their status is measured by how many subordinates they have. So they're just like amass subordinates, whether or not they need them, because they've got less sort of like feudal lords was the word I was looking for. They just want to like well, here's mine. Well, I have fifteen employees in my team. No one ever I mean, then follows up with. So what do all of them do? I don't know. Spreadsheets. Uh, the, I mean, here in in Croatia, they are still. When you say you've, you know, you're, you've got a degree. You know, what have you? What did you study? Engineer or, or well, you got a masters or you know, there's still that sort of like, um, uh, it it does get you out of jail free on a couple of things where you just go right on a form that you're a master's of something and people are like oh okay well madam uh, he said there's a there's a status well, elevation well, well, well here's the here's the conflict here's the here's where i'm like here's the contradiction for me is like one on the one hand can we stop using money for status all the time can we stop turning billion how many billionaires how many billions have you got can we can we find some better as we said back in our first money episode it's like why does i wish money wasn't being used for that but then we're like when i complain about job titles and status and i, I think these are all fine but when that comes at the cost of just the ceo getting a hundred times paid a hundred times more when uh, well, it's, it's used as a substitute for giving you your fair share 
and that's that's when it yeah, upsets me. That's when it's and, wrong. Okay, yeah, we're yeah. we're hierarchical animals. We're I mean, animals are hierarchical, hierarchical things yeah. that exist. It's <laughs> yeah, all yeah, about yeah, like yeah, yeah. banging antlers yeah. and like who's the who's got the highest status. But let's not make the lowest status starving can't yeah, 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 yeah. take a breath has to do three jobs <laughs> like just yeah, to get yeah. by and let's not pretend that someone having a job means the problem solved yeah like that's yeah, not yeah. the problem whether there are enough jobs the problem is there's too many terrible jobs uh, people aren't compensated fairly for what they do no um yeah i mean in work poverty should not be a thing no never mind poverty not being a thing but in work poverty absolutely should not be a thing. How is that possible that you can stand and report your profit margins whilst there are people who work for you who can't afford to live? That's not OK. Yeah. You cannot yeah. you cannot be earning money off the back of someone else living in poverty because you're also creating this sort of never ending circle. It's very, you know. Children who grow up in poverty are a much greater risk of a million bad things happening to them than ones that mm. don't. And you're just creating this society of people who are, um, you know, you who never can get out of it or, or, or can only fluke yeah, yeah, their yeah. way out of yeah, it. And it's exactly. not, it's not, you know, it's not acceptable. I mean, that was, I know you you said you've uh, steered clear of the news this week, but there's a, there's been a Downing Street. So, you know, Dom Cummings did that job ad where he was like, misfits can apply. Hmm. Um, and he then hired somebody who has been outspoken on the subject of eugenics to include the fact that anybody below a, cer a certain uh, poor members of society should be put on enforced um, contraception to end the cycle of people in poverty breeding. Because it's and, and the fact that they're poor. Uh. Do you know what facet, what, what infuriates me about that or what, what I find so illogical and what I can't understand how these people can make a statement like that and they will be the same people that support a points-based immigration system mm -hmm. to say we don't want poor pe people coming into this country who earn under 23 grand or whatever it is yet we also don't want to breed people who earn under 23 grand stop paying people under 23 grand yeah. then you know like just there is and I, I and I look anyway so it's like a um it's a totally it's this it's used this money these 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 jobs and their their concept of what those jobs are worth and how much they should be paid get used for evil all the time yeah in my yes opinion. yes and uh, and just to ruck uh, poverty isn't a lack of character it's a lack of cash how like we just need to write this on everything it seems at the moment because uh, like yeah there's a bit of grinding involved in life yeah but some people have more freedom to do a more rewarding kind of grind than others well I, i'll give you an example locally of uh some people that i hang out with a lot uh, they are. They were economic migrants. A friend of my friends of my parents. He had a relatively skilled uh, job, uh, some form of very highly specialist typesetting in an old school printer. Mm. Um, but she mostly did, um, you know, care work and things like that. Yeah. So they they were economic migrants to Germany. They've always worked very hard. They look after their money. They live frugally. They've done well. And uh, but never earn huge amounts of money. And, and with them, we have these conversations about, oh, so and so, they've got no money. They were, you know, they, they, they shouldn't. They're, they're, they're less likely to be negative about people. But they always bring up the example of someone else we know who arrived here with nothing but a carrier bag and has worked mm. really, really hard. And now he's built himself a house and da, 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 da. You know, but I don't know how happy his childhood was. I don't know how. Do you know, you know what I mean? It's like if you, if you, this, this, what prompts somebody as complex as it is to explain why somebody ends up homeless on the street. Mm. It's as complex to explain why somebody does well. Yeah. But I think we spend more, we, we're, we're much more easy to condemn somebody 
who ends up sleeping rough on the on yeah. the street or oh, it's because they took drugs and yeah. we're, we're very easy to, we, we find it very easy to to write them off but mm. when you take somebody that succeeds we go oh it's because they worked hard yeah. it's like we, we just want to pick one thing yeah. because that's easy rather yeah. than going you know he grew up in a happy childhood his mum taught him how to do this his dad taught yeah. him how to do that his auntie mavis taught him how to do it and, it and it happens that all those magical things came together and therefore he's able to a work hard he's healthy enough to work hard mm. and he's creative in some way blah 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 you know it, do you know what i mean it's yeah, like it's, a, it's, it's, it's um and there's a there's a sort of there, there is that sort of looking down even if you sort of made something of yourself if you feel like you've made something of yourself and then you see someone else struggling there's there's a tendency to look down on them and um that that's i mean that's part of all this i think but like yesterday on the stream i had someone some i guess some young guy sort of like going oh like wanting to learn to program and kind of asking like what you know where should i start i'm not sure where to start and someone um and i'm sort of trying to give some advice and then this other guy sort of comes in and goes just go on google and figure it out for yourself i did and i was like hey hold on <laughs> like, can we um can we not do that can we uh like try and help people that want some help and he's like oh well i had to figure it all out for myself and i was like yeah but that doesn't just because you had a bad time doesn't mean everyone the next should. person needs to have a bad time <laughs> yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah. that's how's that you know i was bullied at school he's like oh yeah well, i was bullied at school for being the nerd that did the thing yeah okay that's terrible but why you, why that doesn't mean that don't you want it to be better for the next sort of yeah, 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 the next yeah, people yeah, 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 yeah. and it's this yeah. you know it's like in, if we, instead of being in that mindset of well i've worked really hard for what i've got and i'm not going to let these lazy people sponge off me if you were like well how can we help the lazy people I've, I've, yeah, yeah. I've accepted yeah. the premise of that there's laziness yeah, unwittingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah i agree that's what we should so do. Like, what, what can we do to inspire them? What can we do to help them find something they're interested in enough to not be quote unquote lazy? What yeah, can we exactly. do to, you know, I, I mean, I think like that um, as much as, you know, you occasionally have conversations with people where you're like, no, uh, you know, I mean, we all know those people that are just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck, they still don't, you know, I still, I'd rather have a go at, at um, helping them succeed in some way if for no other reason that they, they become less annoying <laughs> it's yeah, like, well, it's like, come on I saw that like, Christian mentioned the Peter principle the other day, which is the, uh, which observes that people in a hierarchy tend to rise to their level of incompetence. Yeah. So you're sort of based, you're promoted up until to the job just above the one you want. And the only reason that happens is because the only way of getting paid more money, because we're all not getting paid enough money, is to keep getting promoted in the management hierarchy and even like oyster back in the old days had like a you can either be promoted to management or you've got this one option of becoming a deep specialist in some area and getting yeah. a bit but it still felt like a ceiling to yeah. just be good at doing something yeah um whereas to be visibly in charge of a large number of people always pays more and so that's where it so it sucks all sucks a lot of people that would probably be a lot better happier. deployed somewhere else and happier <laughs> yeah, with their yeah. lives but because money is contingent on this skewed concept of what what uh, how value is defined you just end up like working places where nobody knows what the hell they're doing like it's, <laughs> it's and the people that are good at their jobs aren't getting paid enough <laughs> yeah it's true oh dear it's just so artificial the market is not saving us no no, we're just working away at stuff that just doesn't actually make any sense. Yeah, that Tory thing, this, this idea that you're going to let the market define people's value to come into the, our country. And Rutger, again, in his book, says, like, the biggest cause of discrimination is where you were born in the world. That is the number one discriminator on planet Earth, where you happen to have been born. People, and if we could is... get rid of that... So Maybe a arbitrary. few more people might get a chance. Yeah. We're reverting. We're reversing on that idea. So, yay.
yeah. also I think unless, without this because you know those low paid jobs they're not just I don't know street sweeping or so I don't know whatever anyone has in their head as being like it's like nurses are, are paid under this threshold we know we need street sweeping we need nurses we need people collecting the <laughs> yeah. bins we need people to do all this stuff otherwise you're gonna have to do it with your well page like do you know got- what yeah do you know what the government statement was on this um if you can't get in low paid workers because you're currently relying on eu migrants mm. their answer was uh work to automated the automate the tasks that they do right. or and work on retaining staff you already have okay that was their answer so it's like their answer basically was fuck you <laughs> do <Yes>. it yourself <laughs> so pathetic. it was like literally oh uh huh I feel it's a robot that sprays shit all over everybody, everything. Hooray, he's going to clean the robot. Um, sorry. Let's, um, let's, um, so, and uh, like, it's believe true. it or not, some bit, like, I bet, like, so many people would be quite up for a cleaning job if it was paid the same as the other jobs. I'd, like, I'd, 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 I think I'd, like, I had I'm just going to do three months cleaning. I'm sick of having to figure out algorithms and bugs. I just want to, <laughs> yeah, like, wanna... know. I just want to do something where there's immediate <laughs> feedback without having to sacrifice yeah. my basic fucking, like, yeah, ability yeah, yeah. to survive. I, I had cleaning jobs all the way through university because basically you don't have to talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can listen to your music, you know, put your Walkman on or have the radio on. Yeah. What? Like you say, when it's done, it looks really good. I used to clean a school, uh, you know, mop floors. And I was just, you know, it's quite satisfying. And, you know, you've got to do this much. You've got to get all this bit clean and then you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Very satisfying. Yeah, cleaning. <laughs> I, I'd, be, I'd do a bit of cleaning. I, I don't know. I, may, I think I would. You might even do a bit of bin collecting. It's just like, it just means that suddenly money isn't the factor that's making your decisions for you. I think that would be so liberating for everyone. And I don't think no one would ever clean anything. I don't think no one no. would be a bit. I didn't, don't think no one would be a nurse. Like, obviously, the only yeah. reason that they're able to pay people nothing is because the job has so much intrinsic value. Like, yeah, if it didn't nurse, have that yeah. intrinsic value, you'd have to pay people. Obviously, there's a skill level. Obviously, there's how much time you put in. But, you know, really, the differences between us aren't nearly as much as we think they are. No. Nope. We're all just meat. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you like the podcast, you can subscribe at, in the app that you're listening in or go to grandpodcast.com and there's a big button at the top. Where can people find you, Ivanka? People can find me at Ivanka on Twitter. You can uh, look for me. Well, if you follow me on Twitter, Michael at Michael Forrest, then you'll see my streams. And I, I'm trying to post on... I've got a button now that I can sort of make it little tweet so I can keep tweeting when I'm kind of going to be online so I'm live on the internet quite a lot at the moment so come and find me and say hi what else podcast wise is possible what would be delightful would be if people would write us some reviews ratings give us some stars tell their friends you know just subscribe them I mean I don't know how embarrassing it is to admit that you listen to Michael and Amanda's grand <laughs> podcast but you know just give other people a chance to have a do it to find why not? it why not um, we've also got a Patreon, which is a way that you can give us a, you know, a quid a month, dollar a month, and um, just kind of like helps us cover some costs, the time. Um, I currently pay $31 a month to about 10, 12 different pay- people making art, making videos, making stuff that I'm interested in. So, you know, be more like me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Be generous like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, delightful. Um, yeah, and that's, yeah. Apart from that's that, just, really. you know, keep listening, keep telling people. I hope you let us know. Hello at grandpodcast.com what you think. And we'll uh, see you next week. Goodbye. 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 Bye. Bye. Bye.